Now that you've learned the basics of modeling and the use of Fluidit software, it's time to build our first model. I will do it in Helsinki since it's a familiar place for me, but you can do it anywhere you want. In water distribution systems you always need a water source for your model, so I will add a reservoir from the add menu. and left click on the map we can see that there's a reservoir there. The background map messes up a little bit for the visuals of my model so I can turn it off or I can add a color layer between the background map and my model by right clicking on the background maps and add color layer. Now I can see my added reservoir component more clearly. Then on a water distribution system there's always some pipelines so I will add pipeline by selecting add pipes tool from the top level menu. I will start adding pipeline by left clicking on my freshly ad added reservoir and you can see this kind of a uh, line coming out from the reservoir to my cursor location. I can zoom in with the mouse scroll at the same time while I'm drawing the pipeline. If I press left button the program will create a vertex in that location so you can create this kind of uh, multi-line objects. But if I press down control key and at the same time press left mouse button it will create a junction at the location and end that pipeline but I can still continue drawing the pipelines let's create a few pipelines here I can create a pipeline that connects to existing pipeline by pressing control like this now that I'm satisfied with my pipelines I will press S key so it will cancel the drawing. If I press the S key again it will select the select tool here. Right. Now I have a reservoir and some pipelines and few junctions. Now I need some water consumption in my model. It can be done by adding demands. On the top level tools menu you will have add demand I will create few demands here and there in my model near the junctions. The demands will always connect to the junctions in the model. I will remove the background map so you will see the junctions clearly. So this, these are these purple dots here. I need to connect these demands to my model since they are not they are dangling from my model. I can do it manually by selecting few of them and right clicking on a junction connect selected demands here. You can select them to be sticky so they don't change when I use some kind of uh, automated connection tools. Now you can see that there's a connection line here between the demand and the junction. It is not an actual pipeline but it's just a graphical presentation that these demands are connected to this junction. I could do the same thing for all of the demands in my model with an automated tool that can be found from tools, demand, update demand junctions. Now you can see that all the junctions, all the demands are connected to junctions, the nearest, nearest junction. The demands don't have any water consumption yet, so I will add a little bit water consumption on them. I will select these three and add, for example, 5 cubic meters per day demand on those. And I will select these for to add 3 cubic meters per day. As we know, the water consumption varies throughout the day. So we would like to have some sort of variation to the water consumption. 
It will be done by using patterns. Down on top level menu model you can see patterns. I will create a new pattern here. I will say it's daily consumption. I will say it's a hourly pattern, so it will consist of 24 data points. Good thing with our software is that you can copy paste, for example, these patterns easily from Excel. I have a pattern here that has 24 data points and the average is 1, so I will copy paste it, go back to the software and here press attach then I can see my my uh, pattern looks more or less like this there's a one big de uh, consumption spike multiplier spike between 11 and 12 let's see how that affects our model now I have my demand selected I will put the pattern for the demands that I have selected by using this properties window I can modify all the components that I have selected at the same time now now all my demands have the same pattern called daily consumption one thing that you have to look into is that the pipelines that you add have proper material if you have selected if you have not selected any material while adding the pipelines, they will have none material. Top level, you can find the material library, but it's dependent on what type of material packages you are using. Or the material library you are using. You can have a material library that is only specific for you or certain model. But I will load this finished material pack that we use here in Finland. Now I can see that from the material drop down menu I will find some materials. I can add a material to these pipelines in a similar way that I added the pattern to the demands by selecting multiple pipelines and saying that these three pipelines now have a material for example 110 plastic and these have one hundred fifty iron right now our small model should be ready we can try to simulate it by going through top level menu simulate and simulate or pressing f5 button to automatically simulate we will receive a warning that we have negative pressures the software has an inbuilt error correction and uh, analysis for pointing out some errors in your model. So a negative pressure means that the water supply cannot satisfy all the demand in the model. This is due to because that my reservoir is in the elevation of zero, so there's no really pressure there, and all the other junctions are in the elevation of zero. Of course, when you have a water source, you would use a pump in water distribution system to generate head to the network that would transfer the water to the consumers. But in this simple model I will demonstrate this head by putting some elevation to my reservoir. So this would correspond to three bars of pressure. Let's try to simulate it again. Okay, now, now it's done. Now we start now we can start looking at the results. 
the simulations are always dynamic so the results are tied to certain time in your simulation top from the window menu you can find results let's open one result window here this result window shows time series type of results first I will select what result to show in this window I will select flow you can see it's see it still empty but when I start selecting pipelines in my model there will be time series representing that pipeline and the amount of flow going through that particular pipeline what is handy that it updates according to my selection all the time or if I want to lock the selection I can select few pipelines there and say lock now it doesn't change anymore I can have as many as I want of these result windows and I can select different results to be shown on different windows I will select pressure here so now I will take few junctions and look how the pressure evolves here okay this is the basic of creating a model in fluided water